Have you ever noticed how some reeds will just sing out the highest notes on the oboe, even those third octave notes like D and F sharp that so often want to break? And then some reeds will coast in so safely and beautifully on low notes, sustaining them just as effortlessly as if no oboist had ever struggled down there. Is this just luck? Or can we take some intentional steps to get our priorities met? I mean, let's take as a given that your reed has to do everything at a certain level, but maybe you've got a terrible Dvorak second oboe week coming up, or maybe you're playing the Awaisen concerto and you have to live up on high E's and F's, slurring effortlessly to them over and over again. What are some ingredients you can use in your reed making for these specific battles? Hi, I'm Janet Ingle, the 5-Minute Reed Maker. This week I'm going to talk about low note reeds. These are not a specialty of mine by any stretch. I would live in the second octave if I could but I can't. When I really need to specialize in that area, here are some of the tricks I use. Thing one is, of course, the shape. There are a million different shapes out there, and I will broadly generalize for you that narrower and straighter shapes tend to hold the upper register better, and a slightly wider or more flared shape can really benefit the low register. If you go wider in just the belly area of the shape, right in here-ish, um, you'll tend to get more fullness of sound, but not necessarily an improved response. A little flare up here might help you more with that response, and a little bit more overall width, like so, might be what you're looking for. Um, the compromise of uh, stability up high for effortlessness in the low register might be perfect for certain second oboe gigs. but. To be fair, shapers are pretty deep in the weeds, right? Not everyone has control of this variable or access to as many options as I do. Thing two is the length. Again, this is a broad generalization because every reed is an individual, but I found that a shorter, stubbier reed like this with a much thinner, shorter tip can begin to vibrate much faster than a longer one. Look at the difference here between my high note reed and my low note reed, which I've made just for this set of videos. Uh, a shorter, stubber, stubbier reed with a thinner, shorter tip can begin to vibrate faster than a longer one, and it can be much more successful down low, especially because in, the re in that register, the oboe itself is inherently stable, so you don't have to build so much stability into the reed. Thing three is the internal structure. For this, I sort of want to zoom in on the transition area itself, the rooftop and its trip into the heart. If the slope in your chimney area, right in this region, is really long and gradual, like it sort of is on this reed, um, with a lot of that beautiful built-in two-dimensional slope, you'll probably feel a great deal of stability. And this sort of almost stiffness is, is exactly what you would want to hold the pitch together up high and to encourage success in the third octave. But if I need this exact reed to compromise a little bit and to give me more down low, I'll work the gutters of the rooftop, this area here, to try to bring the lowest register in better without sacrificing too much up top. So this is if I, if I need a reed to do everything, but I need to improve its performance down low. Let me show you that. Here's the reed. It's just sort of a basic medium done reed that I sort of half finished a minute or two ago. It's pretty easy up high. But when I go to articulate down low, it's definitely fighting me a little bit. I don't really want to sacrifice the quality up high or the pitch center that I have, but I do need it to work down low. So I'm going to focus on, as I said, the gutters of the rooftop, first of all, cutting in pretty aggressively right above the heart on the rightmost and the leftmost sides, here and here. Um, of course I follow through and go all the way to the tip because slope always has to go out toward the tip, but I'm not especially concerned about the thinness all the way up the side so much as I am making sure that there's a strong cut in right there. Same on the other side, pay no attention to that corner, corners are optional.
and let's see what we've done. Feels like we've dropped the crow. It's odd, right? You'd think that with a flat crow, you'd have an improved response down low. But I've not necessarily found that to be the case because the reed is flat. Um, I find myself subconsciously biting it up and you're never gonna have success in the low register if you're biting at the same time as you're trying to open up and play. So, it's a better crow. I still have the high register. And my low register has definitely improved. If I really needed this read to only play in the low register for me, if I was able to sacrifice some of that high stuff, then what I would do probably is to lower this the, uh, the point of this rooftop making the rooftop more shallow. I would take away some of this good stuff. Not a lot, of course, there's always slope, but especially on this side, you can see a lot of thickness there. I would probably try to thin it overall and then clip back substantially. Um, and again, doing this will probably spoil what I've got going on up higher, but might be exactly what I need for the lowest register. I certainly hope this video has been helpful to you. This has been a five minute read maker lesson. You can follow these short videos right here on YouTube or on my Facebook page, Janet Ingle Oboist, and you can subscribe if you wish. If you have questions or concerns or you want to order reads or cane, you can find me at JanetIngle.com. In fact, I would love to hear what else I can help you with and what my next short video should address for you. Please let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.